The countdown to Wrestle Kingdom 12 is on. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us. This special preview show on NJPWWorld.com. I'm Kevin Kelly, uh, joined by our pal from Long Beach. We haven't seen in almost a year, Mark Warzeka. And, of course, one of the all-time greats, the director for Rapongi 3K, who's going to have a huge role at Wrestle Kingdom 12. Rocky Romero is here. We've got a double main event this year, gentlemen. We are going to run down the entire card. We'll talk about each and every moment. Mark, coming into Wrestle Kingdom 12, what jumps off the page? What's the one thing you're looking forward to seeing the most? It's an incredible card. I've got to say, the one match that I know is capturing the imaginations of wrestling fans all over the world, Jericho versus Omega. That one's really jumping out at me. It really uh, certainly has captured uh, fans throughout the entire world. But with all the focus on New Japan Pro Wrestling, as we have wrapping up 2017, it's been a great year. 2018 is going to be huge. What are you looking forward to seeing the most, Rock? I got to say the main event, or I should say one of the, our main events, Kazuchika Okada versus Tetsuya Naito. That is, I think, a New Japan fan's dream, and I'm excited for it. And I'm glad that you guys are joining me here on my show once again. I'm the host, Kevin Kelly, co-host, Mark, whatever your Mark was Zika. 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 This is the same thing that happened I'll last I'll just call you time. Mark, Mark. How about that? <laughs> you get it, right, Kevin? Yeah, yeah I do. Yeah. Never heard that before. Well, it's a double main event, fans, and this year's Wrestle Kingdom is bigger than ever. This one's one wing angel driver! What a fantastic, tremendous performer. But he's not the best in the world. I am the greatest of all time. I am the alpha of this business. And I'm gonna prove it. Because I'm challenging you, Kenny. That was Chris Jericho, and he's just challenged Kenny Omega. Bring up the arm. Here's what's gonna happen on January 4th. Destiny, no! <laughs> Okada has found a way to neutralize the finishing move of Tetsuya Naito. All the titles will be on the line at Wrestle Kingdom 12, including the never open weight six men tag team championships, which just recently changed hands at the Road to Tokyo Dome event from Cork and Hall. Now Rocky, you were there and you saw as the BCOGs as they are affectionately known, Bad Luck Fale, Tama Tonga Tongaloa, they captured the crown from the Los Ingobernables de Japón trio of Evil Bushi and Sonata. Um, I know that it was a very, very physical encounter, but we got new champions. Were you surprised? I wasn't surprised because I, I, I thought that their uh, strategy during the match was quite smart going after Bushi, the weak link. He is a smaller individual of the, of the team, so picking him out was smart. And those titles uh, have changed hands quite frequently. Is that something that we, we could see here at Wrestle Kingdom 12? To me, I think it's the most competitive division within New Japan Pro Wrestling, and that's why you see the hot potato mm -hmm. of the title going around to each faction. Mark, with the gauntlet-style rules that we'll see in this championship encounter, it really is a jump ball. Gauntlet match is one of the most unpredictable matches you could see, and you could look at it from, from both sides. The champions are coming into this match, and they're likely going to enter this match last, so that might be an advantage for them because their opponents may have worn themselves down a little bit by then. Also, though, the champions don't necessarily know what team they're going to be facing once they get into this match, which could be a disadvantage for them. I'm sure that they are going to be locked on the monitor right before they go out, ready to rock against whoever it is. Let's move on, Mark, uh, to a match that speaks to your heart because it's four big physical men uh, doing battle tag team titles. Uh, the Killer Elite Squad, Lance Archer, Davey Boy Smith Jr. defending against Evil and Sonata. You know, I wouldn't want to run into a single one of these guys in a dark alley somewhere in Tokyo, let alone all four of these guys. These are some big, aggressive wrestlers. And, you know, I think both of these teams are coming in really hot into the Tokyo Dome. You've got Archer and Smith, who just recently won these titles, back coming off of Archer, returning from Archer's uh, injury. And then you've got Evil and Sonata. LIJ has been on fire. They just won the World Tag League, so they're coming in hot too. 
boy, these four guys are going to be hitting hard. Uh, this is probably not going to be a 60-minute technical classic. Uh, they're they're going to hit each other hard and fast. Evil and Sonata Rock had a great 2017 from where I sit. Los Ingobernables de Japón, that's how you say it, Mark, have had a, a <laughs> heck of a 2017. And I think that Evil had the best year of his wrestling career. He obviously faced Okada. Uh, he beat him in the G1. Sonata... The, the dude is, is, is awesome. You, you know, he's unpredictable. He's got uh, probably the best athlete in New Japan Pro Wrestling. Uh, but I think that the chip on the shoulder of KES is what is going to take them uh, straight into the dome and win this match. Mark, what do you think? I like Evil and Sonata in this one. You would. Yeah. <laughs> well, come on, Rocky. They're a, they're a fantastic team. They're hungry. It's been a great year for them. I think they win. And I lean towards the champions retaining because the Killer Elite Squad, not only uh, were they successful in outlasting uh, War Machine and the Gorillas of Destiny to uh, claim those tag team titles, but throughout the World Tag League, even though they did not finish at the top of their block, to me, they consistently had the best matches. I think they are clicking on all cylinders. I look for KES to retain, but we'll find out what happens. That's why they settle it in the ring, and they will mm -hmm. on January 4th at Wrestle Kingdom. You can see the whole event live at njpwworld.com. Hang on! Wait a minute! Go cross Walter on the stage, my God! On his head, into the rigging. Just jam Ibushi's head. It's a Wrestle Kingdom 12 preview event here at njpwworld.com. Mark Warzeka, Rocky Romero, Kevin Kelly. I would love to tell you where we are, but it's some Shh. secret location. Secret location. I might have to kill you, there's, you, and the crew after this. Because but there's a New Japan ring behind us. Stop asking questions, Kevin. Let's move this train along. You know, if you kill us all in the crew, no one will ever see this. It's not a great plan, Rocky. It's like the Blair Witch Project, so I'll just dump the tape somewhere. Well, are we going to learn more about where we are? Coming soon. Coming soon. Okay. Hold your horses. Well, let's talk about another match. While we know that all the championships are going to be on the line at Wrestle Kingdom 12, there is a special singles match with no championship at stake. That's because Cody was recently defeated for the Ring of Honor World Championship. So he will take on Kota Ibushi in an eagerly anticipated match with no title on the line, but perhaps something more. Uh, Mark, I know we talked about this a little bit earlier on before yeah. Rocky got here. It's nice of you to be on time, by the way, boss. Thank you so much. A busy man. I know you are. The emotions seem to be running high with, uh, with Cody uh, really doing a number on, on Ibushi at the World Tag League Finals. But more than that, it seems like Ibushi is super, super motivated for this matchup. Yeah, and you know, when I think about this match, Kevin, I think about these, both of these guys, it's no exaggeration to say that they are international superstars. We know, of course, that they're here in New Japan. We know that they wrestle all over the world. And how do these guys want to start their year? January 4th, Tokyo Dome, this massive show. They, they both want to start with a victory. They both want to kick off this year right. And, I, you know, I think that's what's going to be driving both of them into this show. I think part of the narrative, Rocky, that we're looking at is uh, Ibushi seemed to question the actual motivation for this match after Cody's defeat at the hands of Dalton Castle recently at Final Battle for Ring of Honor. No, no title on the line here. And uh, Ibushi seems to really question Cody's heart, mm -hmm. questions his ability. And I don't think this is going to sit too well with the American Nightmare. Well, I, I think that he shouldn't question too much because he's coming off a huge loss, a power struggle mm -hmm. against Hiroshi Tanahashi. He was unsuccessful in gaining the IC title. So I, I, I wonder where this all plays out. You know, like you said, will Cody win this and challenge against a Naito or an Okada? Mm -hmm. Will he challenge against a Kenny or a Jericho? Where does that lie? Or will he go after the winner of Switchblade and Hiroshi Tanahashi? And Ibushi, it's the same question goes to him. Right. I think that, Mark, is a scenario that we are looking at, perhaps more than any other match on the Wrestle Kingdom 12 card, is that the winner from this one can almost pick which championship he would like to challenge. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's what these guys are going to be thinking about. Intercontinental, heavyweight. Where do I head this year? Where's my career going in New Japan this year? Where does winning this match launch me? Yeah, and of course, Ibushi has been on the rise since he was a surprise entrant in this year's G1. And as we saw recently, Hiroshi Tanahashi sat down for a very special edition of Wonderland, which is available right here on NJPWWorld.com. 
Tanahashi spoke in very glowing terms about Kota Ibushi. He sees true greatness in this young man and believes that his time is now. Ibushi has all the tools that he's just lacks the motivation. I think he's got the motivation heading in to Tokyo Dome, heading into January 4th, heading into the matchup against Cody. It's a special singles match. Well, Kevin, I hope that Cody Ibushi finds his uh, motivation quickly because if not, Cody's gonna knock him out with the crossroads just like he did at the uh, World Tag League Final. And that's gonna be it. Starting off 2018 with a loss? I mean, come on, it's terrible. That would not be the way to start off the year. But uh, at some point this year, are we gonna find out the secret location that we're in? What? what? Secret location? I I don't know what you're talking about. Folks, this is a Wrestle Kingdom 12 preview show here at njpwworld.com. We got something very important to talk about next, though. So the reason we came out here is to challenge you guys. You guys want a title match? Then, okay. One of the biggest stories in 2017 in New Japan Pro Wrestling was the return from Excursion and leaping all the way to the top of the junior heavyweight tag team division for Rapongi 3K, Yo and Sho, and their director, Rocky Romero. But before I get to you, Rock, I gotta ask you, Mark, because mm -hmm. Rapongi 3K is now defending the IWGP junior heavyweight tag team titles against the Young Bucks at Wrestle Kingdom 12. This, to me, has all the earmarks of a match that could completely steal the show. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Rapungi 3K have been shot out of a cannon. All right, Mark, that's enough out of you, okay. Hmm. Let's talk about Rapungi 3K. My well, boys. Was... Shut up. Nobody cares. My inv Let me ask you something. Did you invest in Bitcoin? A, a you little probably, bit. I mean, I... You probably did, but let's talk about the investment in show and yo Rapungi 3K, the silver and gold stick standard of the junior heavyweight tag division. These guys have been shot out of a cannon. That's what I was saying. Mm -hmm. He said that. Rhea Goku Sumo Hall beat Taguchi and Ricochet, the funky future. You called it. You said, I've got a team. They're coming here soon. They're 3,000 times better. I know. You were exactly right. Of course I was. You're like Nostradamus. Of course I am. All right, so what's your prediction now? For, well, I'll get to your prediction in a minute, because I know who you're going to pick. Let's, but, but can we talk about Sho and Yo winning the Super Junior Tag Team how tournament about that? as well? You know, these guys are two months in, less than two months in. They've taken the championships, they've taken the tournament, and now we walk into Wrestle Kingdom, probably against their most uh, formidable opponents. You know, uh, the Young Bucks, the Elite, the One Sweeters. Mm -hmm. But let us let me tell you something. We are the one percent. Rapungi 3K. We are the top, the tippy top of the wrestling world. And of course, a victory over the Young Bucks, I think would add a lot more validity to Rocky's claim uh, well, when you look at what the Young Bucks have done throughout their entire careers. It, it, especially when you look at what the Young Bucks did just recently to Rocky Romero. Oh no, wait a minute. That, it, that's right, do we have that footage? Yeah. Super kick! It was World Tag League. Yeah. Remember the World Tag League no, finals I, in Fukuoka? It was a no. six-man tag. It was Kenny Omega yeah. and the Young Bucks, the elite, in a six-man tag against Yo, Sho, and Rocky Romero. Oh, my God. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> wow. They just crushed Romero. And, ooh, that swanton there, that didn't look you're so gonna, good. It kind of squashed you. They kind of squashed you. Showing the footage? Yeah, yeah, like, a, yeah. Bu like a bug, they squashed you. Yeah. Ooh. Oh my God. <laughs> what did that? What was that like? I don't know what you're talking about. I don't remember it. You know, so many days on the road, a couple of them drinking. Anyway, anyway, moving on. Rapungi 3K is ready for the Young Bucks and Wrestle Kingdom 12, January 4. You might see the show stolen, like you said, because we have four of the top performers in the world going at it for the most prestigious tag team title expect, in my in my opinion the IWGP junior tag team so championship. Bucks who's your face. pick mark well Rocky I, I understand I've heard of managers I've heard of valets I, I, I've heard, even heard of an advocate I, I'd never before heard of a director but uh, I know you're gonna be the director in their corner that certainly gives Rapungi 3k Correct. director Marcus a, a, a big advantage what's your, what's your point? but my pick 
is the Young Bucks. I think we're going to find out that some directors are Steven Spielberg and some are Ed Wood. When you have somebody like Rocky Romero in your corner, though, you've got to think about what the rivalry with Rocky and the Young Bucks means. My pick, I'm leaning towards siding with Rocky. I think Rapongi 3K not only pulls the upset, not only because they are great, and yes, the Young Bucks, the measuring stick by which all other teams are judged, the best tag team in the world today, but Yo and Sho are something special. And the director, Rocky Romero, against his greatest nemesis. <laughs> We're talking about the best team in the world right now, Rapongi 3K. When is the match going to happen? That's not up to me, but I, I want to get it over. Listen to, listen right. to a backtrack. Listen baby. to a backtrack. RockyRomeroMerch.com. The Young Bucks, I got a feeling he might have a trick or two up that sleeve that he will impart to Yo and Sho. And uh, I think the champs retain. But we'll find out what happens at Wrestle Kingdom. Can we roll that footage in again? Did, did I ever say I liked you, Kevin Kelly? Thank you, Rocky. Yeah. Now let's go back and let's show that. Can we show that footage again no, of Rocky? Not director, man, don't do that. All right, maybe not. We got <laughs> Listen to this director here, okay? <laughs> we got a lot more ground to cover here at Wrestle Kingdom 12 pre Gentlemen, another eagerly anticipated championship match at Wrestle Kingdom 12 will be a four-way match for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship. The current villainous champion defending against three former champs in a contest where one fall decides it all. It's champion the villain, Marty Skrull, versus Will Ospreay, versus Kushida, versus Hiromu Takahashi. All four have had a grip on the crown this year. Kushida was the champ in September when Will Ospreay challenged for the title and Takahashi got KO'd before he could issue his challenge. In October, after Osprey was finally successful in besting Kushida to claim the crown for the first time, Hiromu tried again to challenge for the title, but the villain snapped his fingers and jumped to the front of the line. Three things certain in life according to the villain, death, taxes, and Skrull beats Osprey. Bullet Club claims the crown at Power Struggle, but Kushida and Osprey both want rematches. While the debate raged in the ring, the twice thwarted time bomb made his way down to ringside with safety first in mind. The Junior Heavyweight Championship has changed hands more often than any other title this year in New Japan. And odds makers say this trend will continue at Wrestle Kingdom 12 on January 4th, live on NJPWWorld.com. Skrull, Osprey, Kushida, and Takahashi for the Junior Heavyweight Championship. How desperate would you have to be in your own life to feel like the only thing that you can put up for an opponent, the only thing that you have left is your own hair? Well, that's where Hiroki Goto finds himself in. He will challenge Minoru Suzuki for the Never Open Weight Championship at Wrestle Kingdom 12. But not only will it be for the championship, but it will also involve the loser losing his hair. Rocky, this was a situation that became very, very personal and someone you know so well in Goto and the Chaos Faction. Goto came very close to unseating Minoru Suzuki, but was unable to do so. But that did not deter him from pursuing the king. I think it's silly that Goto put up his hair because I think that he is a contender no matter what. And I, I'd hate to see him put himself in that predicament, but I have to applaud him in the fact that he's actually going through with it and putting up something that is important because maybe you could talk about if you're shaving your head in the Japanese culture and right. what that actually mm -hmm. means. It, it's usually, you might see it in the public eye, it's an act of contrition. If someone uh, does something wrong, they will actually shave their own hair in an effort to apologize. It's an emasculating. It's, it's a way to break yourself down. They do it to all the trainees at the dojo. Mm. It's humiliation. It's much, much more than just the hair which can grow back, Mark. It's about something so personal and deep down in your gut. But Goto wouldn't get this match from Minoru Suzuki unless he would go to this point. It may even sound a little silly at first, but Goto doesn't have a, a short haircut like us, right? right? I mean, this is a big, 
full head of hair that this guy has grown for a long time. There's some pride associated with that culturally, and to use that would be such a, a, a big change every time he looks in the mirror. If he lost that, if he loses his hair in this match, every time he looks in the mirror, he's going to be reminded of that shame and humiliation. For Goto, he either loses his hair or he wins that title. The stakes are huge for him in this match. Let's not forget that Minoru Suzuki said, Road to Tokyo Dome. Not only will we have the match where the loser will uh, shave their, they'll get their head shaved, but there will be no seconds in the corners, no interference. It's one on one. And I think that's very, very important for Hiroki Goto. Oh, yeah, definitely key. Not having a second, obviously, Suzuki Goon, that is one of their greatest strategies, is having a Taka, a Taichi, a Kanemaru just within a couple feet away that if anything goes wrong, they can distract the ref, if that's what you want to mm -hmm. call it, <laughs> yeah. and, and help uh, their, their stable mate. But in this particular situation, there will be none of that. It's one-on-one, -on -one, mano a -on mano Hiroki Goto is going to walk away. I'm just throwing it out there. I could see him becoming the never champion once Mark, again. thoughts? Yeah, I think if I was Goto going into this, just the fact that there are no seconds would give me an increased sense of confidence, because you know you're always having to deal with that interference from Suzuki's crew, and uh, I, I could see that no seconds really bolstering Goto mentally going into this match. And I lean more towards that as well because, you know, again, I sat ringside and we saw last year at Wrestle Kingdom, Hiroki Goto captured the never open weight title in a memorable bout against Shibata. I think he duplicates the feat this year. But Minoru Suzuki will do everything in his power. He will push Goto to the limit physically like Goto has never been challenged before. It is just one of the great title matches that we've got coming up at Wrestle Kingdom 12. Oh, Don, Don, the knife. This is, this is those videos we've been seeing. Double main event at Wrestle Kingdom 12 on January 4th, live on NJPWWorld.com. And a man who certainly knows what it's like to be part of main events at the Tokyo Dome this year. Rocky, he will defend the Intercontinental Championship. That's right, Hiroshi Tanahashi uh, defends the crown against someone that many new New Japan fans may not even be aware of. We just got our first glimpses of Switchblade Jay White back power struggle couple of months ago after seeing some creepy videos that mm. had been playing for, for quite a bit. But it was our first glimpse of him. What a way to make a, uh, a return to the company. You know, it, it was very interesting the way he came in. We, we, we wondered who this Switchblade character was for so many months, and we thought we would never know. But finally, at the end of Power Struggle, as Tanahashi uh, made his last uh, speech of the evening, he played the air guitar, and then we saw another creepy video. And lo and behold, Switchblade was Jay White. Well, we may not have to wait for January 4th. Oh, they're going toe to toe in the second leg. He just drives Tanahashi into the mat. That's Switchblade Jay White. Tana's out. And just like that, Switchblade Jay White puts on the leather coat and will leave. He came to the ring, he made an impact. They went one and one, a couple of elbows from each one, and then finally laying him out with what we just found out the name of his new finisher is called the Blade Runner. And obviously much more than just some creepy videos. This Switchblade Jay White, he's got all the physical tools. He's completely transformed. This is going to be the biggest match of his career, certainly. And one thing to remember, though, guys, is that uh, Tanahashi, at least one of the greatest of all time, he is also banged up right now. Yeah. The knee's banged up the bicep tear that he's been wrestling with for months. So, and, and Switchblade Jay White knows that. He's gonna target those parts of the body in that match. Switchblade Jay White, of course, returning from Excursion, another product of the New Japan Dojo, but now after spending two years in America competing for Ring of Honor, he returns. Uh, and it seems like a lot of what he wants the ace to know is that uh, Switchblade Jay White took great offense at uh, Tanahashi's comments about what this Intercontinental Championship title defense means to him. 
at Wrestle Kingdom right. 12. Right, Tana Tanahashi had some words about saying that uh, for him, this match didn't really mean anything in the fact that, like, well... It's a bit of a letdown. He's yeah, not in the main event. Exactly. You know, he is the ace of New Japan. But, and Jay White basically said, hey, Tana, if you say that you're the ace of New Japan, then you better step up and show it. You better not just brush me away to say just because you're not in the main event. There's more to this. This is for the Intercontinental Championship. This is a big deal. This is Wrestle Kingdom. You know, the world is watching. This is the biggest audience that we will ever have, you know, in New Japan, or, or to this date, I should say. Yeah, well, certainly one of the uh, uh, largest crowds that we'll see, one of the largest live attended events uh, that we've seen in probably 15 years at New Japan Pro Wrestling this year for Wrestle Kingdom 12. So. Does the New Zealand native, Jay White, does he walk into Wrestle Kingdom 12 in his first match returning from excursion? Does he defeat the ace of New Japan Pro Wrestling and capture the Intercontinental title? Does it happen, Mark? I, I might surprise you guys with this one, but I say yes. Wow. I think he is going to win. I think if I'm Jay White, I have everything to gain. I have nothing to lose. I'm throwing 110% of myself into this thing. I think he's all in. I think he gets an upset here. I have a hard time betting against Tanahashi yeah. in, any, in any match. Any situation. But he is injured. That yeah. knee, that, uh, that torn bicep that he's been wrestling with for the last eight months, that could be the, the, the thing that, that sways my way. And I, I, I might agree with Mark on this one, yeah, actually. It has. I never say it. Go crazy, right? Uh, <laughs> when you look at what Switchblade Jay White did, uh, Cork and Hall, uh, Tanahashi came out and apologized for not being able to compete as of late. He is nursing a knee injury, but he promised that he would be back at 100% for Wrestle Kingdom 12. Switchblade Jay White came out. They had words. They got face-to-face. -face, they traded a little bit, and then all of a sudden, it was one of Tanahashi's moves, a dragon screw leg whip on that uh, compromised knee. And you can see right away, Tanahashi is not 100% yet. He's got some ground to cover before Wrestle Kingdom 12. But the Intercontinental Championship will be on the line. Hiroshi Tanahashi defending against Switchblade Jay White. Guys, we've got to talk now about this double main event. Oh my God! Whoa. It's Chris Jericho! Chris Jericho's here! Jericho! Jericho! Oh Jericho. my God! Codebreaker! Codebreaker on Omega! Jericho's got that U.S. title! U.S. title in his hands! And Aaron stop him! Is there any particular reason why you did that last night in the ring in Fukuoka. Well, you're right, it is a dream match. Uh, Alpha versus Omega, Kenny versus Jericho. You can... of this amazing double main event. Chris Jericho taking on Kenny Omega. Kevin, this is gonna be a once in a lifetime matchup. Yeah, a dream matchup. Certainly we could only have ever imagined, uh, but for the US Championship, it will take place. Rocky, it began with a video, a video message sent to Omega at Power Struggle on November 5th. That sent shockwaves throughout the wrestling world, but it didn't end there. No, 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 it didn't. We saw the second video, Lights go out, and boom, Chris Jericho, live in the flesh, is standing behind Kenny Omega. He attacks him from behind. Don Callis makes his way into the room, into the, well, I should say. I told him not to. <laughs> After Kenny got laid out, nobody was there to check on Omega, and Don, of course, very close to Omega. Uh, he got caught up in and found a code breaker his way as well. He is convalescing and he will be back with us on January 4th. Oh, <laughs> well, not too not too quickly down, not no. too quickly. But either way, Chris Jericho came to New Japan. He has already made a huge impact. Like we talked about, shockwaves throughout the wrestling world, mainstream media. New Japan is even more on the map more than ever with Chris Jericho versus Kenny Omega. And it, with the blood that was drawn by uh, Jericho on Omega, this match now takes an entirely different dimension. It was announced that uh, Sugabayashi, the chairman, announced it's now no disqualification. So how does this play into the outcome? The, the rivalry doesn't surprise me. Both fantastic 
wrestlers, both superstars, both Canadians, both from Winnipeg, both think they're the best in the world. But the fact that this turned into a blood feud, I think is really remarkable. No disqualification, anything goes, really opens up a lot of possibilities for both of these wild men. And with the US championship at stake, does it hold some possibilities for March 25th? Mm. And the return of New Japan Pro Wrestling to Long Beach, this time at Walter Pavilion. Ticket information coming very soon. All the information at njpw1972.com. Plus, you'll see it all throughout social media as well. More on that, but Who the U.S. Picking? Championship. Who are you Come on now. Who are you Let's go down the line. If, you got, if you've got Omega as champ and you want to see more of Chris Jericho, then your pick has got to be Jericho. But right. Jericho says the only time this match is going to happen I got a feeling that somehow, some way, Omega winds up, but I don't think this is the last time we see Chris Jericho here in New Japan. Yeah, you know what, I, I, I think it's gonna go to Omega. I, I think that he's younger, faster, stronger. I think he wants it more, he knows the world is watching, and he's a wild man. Chris Jericho was a wild man as well, but I think that just Kenny has the upper hand here. Well, you know, Rocky, I do like to disagree with you, so this gives me an opportunity to. <laughs> can't agree on dinner, can't agree on this. You know, but my pick here is Chris Jericho, and here's why. Look, if we were gonna, if this was gonna be the technical wrestling match that we all thought this was gonna be in the beginning, I would pick Kenny Omega. But where we are now, where it's a blood feud, no disqualification. I think Jericho has the advantage in that setting. I pick Jericho. Chris Jericho has continued to reinvent himself time and time again. And this incarnation of, of Jericho more violent than ever. Uh, regardless of the outcome, this is going to be something the world is not only talking about on the run-up to January 4th, Wrestle Kingdom 12, but I got a feeling it's going to be one of the most talked about things that happens in New Japan Pro Wrestling in a long time to come. That is just one half of our double main event. We can't wait to see what's going to happen. But Rocky, the champ, is in the main event this year. To neutralize the finishing move of Tetsuya Naito. So he's choking out Takahashi. On a whole other level. Kevin, you are right. The champ is here. He is in the final match of the Wrestle Kingdom 12 card, our second half of this double main event. Kazuchika Okada, the Rainmaker versus Tetsuya Naito for the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. What are your thoughts? Well, when you look at a, a champion in Okada, the longest reigning IWGP champion uh, in history, surpassing Shinya Hashimoto, and now has taken it almost another 100 days. Um, the question really goes back, Mark, almost to four years ago. What should have been the crowning moment in Naito's career, who would be the Shuyaku, who is the top star of New Japan Pro Wrestling? The time was not right for Naito, but he has never forgotten that moment. You know what Naito's going to be thinking about when he's headed to the ring at Wrestle Kingdom? He's going to be thinking about four years ago when he was essentially humiliated, supposed to be in the at least the way that's how he felt about it. He was supposed to be in the main event that year. The fans voted for his match to not be the main event. He remembers that. He remembers what it felt like to be humiliated, to be mocked in that setting. And he's gonna carry that into the ring with him. I think he's going, he's always dangerous. I think he's going to be especially dangerous because he has so much to prove in this match. But Okada has shown time and time again, Rock, to be, to take everyone's best shot mm -hmm. throughout all of these title defenses in this remarkable fourth reign as champion. He's taken everybody's best shot when they are at their peak, when they are at their most motivated, and Okada has reigned supreme time and again. What, how will this be different at Wrestle Kingdom? I, I think it won't be different in the fact that Okada is the most complete professional wrestler on the planet, without a doubt. He started training uh, in the early 2000s in, in Mexico. He's got a, a Lucha Libre background. He then moved to New Japan. He's got the strong style background. He then went to an excursion in America and picked up more tools for his toolbox. Tetsuya Naito, is he ready for the challenge against the Rainmaker? That's what the, the real question is, you know? He has the attitude, yes. He has all the makings of a superstar, a megastar. He is one of the most beloved wrestlers uh, in New Japan history. But the man standing across uh, the ring from him has had the greatest string of matches ever put together. This title reign 
He has been unstoppable. Kenny Omega, Katsuyori Shishibata. Evil Fale, Minoru Suzuki, <laughs> time, them. time, time, time again. It's name unbelievable, and, this uh, difference, there's so many different styles in these right. defenses. Right. And when you look at, of course now, as the year-end awards start to come in, and with uh, Tetsuya Naito being voted the MVP mm -hmm. uh, by Tokyo Sports, and congratulations to Naito, very well deserved. The best bout award, though, went to Okada versus Omega from last year's Wrestle Kingdom. Naito's got this chip on his shoulder, and he's, he's found a, a, a sort of new relationship with a lot of the fans, but he has this bitterness and resentment towards uh, New Japan Professional Wrestling as a company. I'm not quite sure what happens if he wins the heavyweight title in this match. Last time he won the title, he threw it over his shoulder. He won the Intercontinental title, and he literally destroyed the belt. <laughs> he smashed it, he broke it, if this, guy, if this guy wins this match, the main event of Wrestle Kingdom, the biggest show of the year, I don't know what happens next for this company with him, with him on top. And one of the most recent developments, you talk about uh, Okada's diverse background in his training, was his implementation of a new submission hold. This Cobra Clutch that we saw seemingly out of nowhere, but has vexed Naito time and time and time again. It's a counter to Destino. Right. It's perfect for the Rainmaker. Like he right. doesn't have enough tools. He doesn't have enough weapons. Oh, now he's got a new submission finisher. What? Talk about what Okada, his thought process in bringing this hold to the forefront. I think the Cobra Clutch is, is a vital tool that he's added to wear Tetsuya Naito down. Tetsuya Naito has a, his style is all about speed, right? He bounces across the ring, you know, from one side to the other, and his attack is relentless. This is a way for him to control Tetsuya Naito, deliver the Rainmaker, Shibakuzo Konayaro, one, two, three, Rainmaker stays champ. Well, the G1 Climax winner this year, Tetsuya Naito, earns the IWGP Heavyweight Championship opportunity at Wrestle Kingdom. That is the guarantee every year. Where the match is placed, that might change. But this match deserves its place at the top of the card. The two biggest stars in New Japan Pro Wrestling, two of the top four in the world today. The MVP, as voted on by Tokyo Sports, Tetsuya Naito. Best Bout Award winner, Kazuchika Okada. So who's your pick, Mark? Come on, the IWGP Heavyweight Championship is hanging in the balance, we need to know. I think this one is nearly impossible to call, but if I have to make a call right here and now, I think Okada has been on an unbelievable roll against this wide variety of opponents. I think he does successfully defend in the Tokyo Dome. He would be my pick. You two are in agreement? Finally! This is well, so rare. You've come to the dark side. Well, or you've come to the light. <laughs> well, listen, we could say, you know, the, we're, we're three amigos here. We would all be in agreement. But I'm going to be the contrarian here. There is something special about Tetsuya Naito right now. There is some X factor that he has in his heart. Yes, he still has that chip on his shoulder. Yes, he will never forget the bitterness of being passed over for the main event spot four years ago. But what Naito has right now is a legion of fans, a legion of supporters. Those that might be the outcasts, if you will, in Japanese culture have rallied around him. And the ones that are different, the ones that are looked upon, maybe they don't fit in, maybe they're not the chosen one, all around the world, they've rallied around Naito as well. While Okada has every tool in the toolbox, Tetsuya Naito has more of the people with him. There is gonna be a record crowd on hand for Wrestle Kingdom 12 on January 4th. And I think at the end of the night, it's gonna be Los Ingobernables de Japón that is victorious, and the Legion of Fans will celebrate in victory. But it is going to be an instant classic, and it wouldn't shock me if this is the best bout award winner for 2018, four days into the brand new year. So that's gonna do it for this special preview of Wrestle Kingdom 12. It's January 4th, live from the Tokyo Dome. You can see the entire event live from start to finish. The only place you can see it live, njpwworld.com. It has been a blast hanging out with you guys, talking some Wrestle it's Kingdom. It's been really fun hanging with you, Kevin. Really fun hanging with you. How about Mark? You wanna? What? No, not this guy. All right. Well, listen, Mark is just like all of us. He's a huge fan of New Japan Pro Wrestling. So if fans want to send you a note, social media, get in touch with you, how can they, uh, how can they reach out to you? Yeah, thank you, Kevin. Yeah. 
Well, you know, all of my social media is all just my name. It's M A R C W A R. Anyway, at Azuka Rock, A Z U C A R R O C. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram. Don't forget RockyRomeroMerch.com. Check it out. Get all your latest Rapungi uh, clothes, Rocky Romero hats, figures. We got it all. Pins. Pins. We got it all. We got RockyRomeroMerch.com. Well, um, I think, Mark, if. You told the director to yeah. load that special. Well, it seems like we've covered everything else. There was really only one thing left to do, and that's to once again watch the clip of the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega squashing Rocky Romero. Oh. <laughs> I love it. Love All right, it. so we'll leave you with what? that, fans. We will see you at Wrestle Kingdom 12, live right here, njpwworld.com. No, 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 don't you play that. Don't you, don't you play that. Don't you play that. 